Hey everyone, Pastor Bill Wiggs here from the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois with a devotional for Friday, September 4th, 2020. Well, today we are bringing our study of 1 John to a finish. We are going to be looking at chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. This has been a wonderful journey of digging in to the Word of God. And this last devotion kind of wraps everything up as John was bringing his letter to a close. So hear now the word of the Lord from 1 John chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Well, digging right into our text today, we see again the contrast that the Holy Spirit paints through the pen of John the beloved apostle between believers and those who are not believers. We know that we are from God. He is now speaking of himself along with the congregation he's writing to and all those who this letter is part of our lives since the day it was written right down to this very day. Because we have accepted Jesus Christ and we have the assurance of our salvation in our hearts, we know that we are from God. But the rest of the world, those who do not believe in God, are lying under the power of Satan. He is in control in their lives, whether they know it or not. The New Living Translation says it this way, We know that we are children of God and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. It is very easy for us to look at the world of our day and see that it is indeed under the power of the evil one. We have terrible things that go on in our world, wars and terrorism and the killing of the unborn and murders and pestilence and viruses and so much else. All those are the works of the devil to destroy God's good creation. But we don't belong to that world. We live in that world, yes, but we belong to God, to the kingdom of God that is a present reality for us even while we live in this temporal world and go about our day-to-day -day lives. We are indeed from God. Since we know the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and since we now have an understanding of what it means for him to be truly God and fully man, and since we have an understanding, furthermore, that we are saved by grace through Jesus Christ and that we are going on to perfection, then we have the truth living in our hearts. The New Living Translation of verse 20 says, And we know that the Son of God has come. Yes, we know that Christ has come into the world and that he's come into our hearts when we believed. And he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. Christ reveals the Father to us. The heavens declare the glory of God, so we are without excuse to believe that there is a God, but you can't really know what God is like by his creation. You can see his power, you can see his creative nature, but you can't really know his heart until you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Because we know the Son, we know the Father. Do you remember when the disciples said to, to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because Jesus reveals to us the very heart of God. Our Father in heaven loves us so much that he gave his Son to die for us, even while we were yet sinners. Even while we were yet sinners, proving his love to us. That is the heart of the God we serve. Throughout this letter, we have been filled with the information that is there to help us understand what our lives are supposed to be like, that we do not continue in the habit of sin. We do not make it a habit to go around doing things that are contrary to the Word of God or to defaming His name, but instead, 
we can live a victorious life because Christ is in our heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the witness of the water. We have the witness of the blood. We have the witness of the Spirit. God has spoken to us through His Son, and salvation is assured. But we must be on guard in this world that we not fall into the traps that the devil's been trying to set through false teachers, through moral compromise, through the general stuff of this life that so easily ensnares us. And so John goes on, And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father. He is the life. He is the power of God in our lives. He's the truth. He is God himself. And because we know him, we have eternal life. We have fellowship with God, fellowship through his son, Jesus Christ. And there is joy in that. And our fellowship is made perfect as we together with, the, with our brothers and sisters in Christ embrace the work of God in our lives, embrace this new life that he's given us, and then we will bring glory to God. Well, as John brings his letter to a close, he has one more warning for his little children. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Now, this seems a little abrupt when you look at it in some translations. It seems a little abrupt. In fact, there are some who believe that he was starting another topic because pretty much every time he said little children in this letter, he's starting another topic. And that perhaps we now have part of 1 John missing. We lost it somehow. And that may be true, but I also know that since God inspired the Word of God through the writers that he used, and since he inspired those who put the canon of Scripture together, who, who chose the Christian writings that would be the New Testament, somehow I doubt that God would allow part of this letter to go missing on us if it really had something important to say. If there was more, Maybe John had just gotten fanciful in his own ideas, but I don't think so. John has been inspired by the Holy Spirit. God has breathed this into him, and he stops with these words, Little children, keep yourself from idols. I do like the way that the New Living Translation puts it. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Isn't that really the warning that he has given all through this letter? Isn't that really the very center of it all? That no false doctrine, no moral teaching, or rather immoral teaching, no greed, nothing in all this world should separate us from God. When we put our eyes on people instead of God and start really allowing them to take God's place, we become utterly lost. When we start allowing possessions to take God's place, then we become lost. When we start allowing pleasure to take God's place, then we become lost. An idol does not have to be a statue of wood or stone or gold or any other substance for it to take the place of God in our heart. We are told that as believers in Jesus Christ, we must not let anything, anything, take the place of God in our hearts. And I think that is a wonderful way to complete this message to the churches. God must be number one. If you're struggling with temptation and you're about to fall, it's because you have allowed something to take the place of God. If you are falling into false doctrine and believing the stuff that just sounds good to your itching ears, well, then you may have placed your own wants, your own desires, your own ideas, or the ideas of others, ahead of the Word of God, and therefore, you've allowed idolatry to enter your heart. We are supposed to not let anything, not people, not possessions, not pleasures of this flesh, get in the way of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And I've come to learn something over the years. 
Anytime I allow anything to get in the way between me and God, I allow a barrier to come, I'm not happy. Oh, I may have a, a momentary uh, joy in it, but I'm not truly happy. It is only when I have humbled myself before the Lord that I am truly happy. It is only when I'm walking in His ways, walking in His will, that I am truly happy. And that's what I want for all of you who have been watching these videos. Well, I hope that this teaching on 1 John has been a blessing to you and that it has helped you to grow in your faith. I don't know exactly where I'm going to go next, but we will be coming to some more devotions on a Bible study format. And so I encourage you, if there's a book of the Bible that you'd like to see us study through this venue, put a comment below, send me a private message, email me, and I'll look into doing it. And I believe that God is going to bless us. Now, this is Friday. Tomorrow we're going to have an online prayer service that will be a service of evening prayer. It will be available starting at 10 a.m., even though evening comes later. But I don't know when, when you will watch it. But I hope it's a blessing to you. And then Sunday morning we will have worship at our regular time. 9 a.m. at Sunfield and 10.30 at Greenwood. I hope you will come out and join us. Remember, if you're sick, please stay home. Before you come, check your temperature. Kind of think about your general overall health. And please, when you enter the building, wear a mask. I know that you have the freedom to wear one or not. That I know there's a lot of people that are against wearing the mask. I would rather wear the mask and get to worship than to not wear it and still be on shutdown. Wouldn't you? I mean, I would think so. We have a wonderful time of fellowship at our churches and some great people that want to get to know you. And so come in, wear your mask, visit with each other. Sorry, no handshakes or hugs. I wish you could. It's a hard thing. But you can have great fellowship with one another, even six feet apart in a mask on your face. And then when it's time for worship, sit down with your family and enter into the worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you are not able to attend in person, then you can watch the Sunfield service live on Facebook and YouTube at 9 a.m. And then for the Greenwood Church, again this week, we are not able to broadcast the service. So I invite you to look for the Sunfield service, which will be shared to the Greenwood Facebook page. I think next week we will be able to broadcast again the Greenwood service itself. But I hope you are blessed by the worship on Sunday. And I hope that you will join us tomorrow on Facebook and YouTube for our service of evening prayer and praise. And that it is a blessing to you and your growth in the Lord. Well, let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you for all that we have learned from the book of 1 John. We thank you, God, that we have an assurance of our salvation in Jesus Christ. We thank you that even while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us, proving your love for us, Lord. And Father, we thank you that you walk with us every step of the way. Lord, we want to be faithful to you, and so we ask that your Holy Spirit would give us the strength we need, that, Lord, you would open our eyes and hearts to be able to know when someone is teaching falsehood, and, Lord, that we would be able to stand up against temptations that come at us because we are serving you. Lord, pour out your Spirit on all of us who are part of this video series that we might experience your love and your grace and touch each heart so that we can live more fully for you. Lord, we ask that you'll continue to be with those who are sick and bring your healing touch. We ask that you'll continue to be with our health care workers so that, Lord, they can stay healthy as they try to keep us healthy. Lord, be with our country, with our president, with our Congress, with those who are running for office, Lord, that they might use wisdom as they proceed. And, Lord, that that wisdom might not be their own, but yours. Lord, in all these things, we worship you, and we thank you for your constant presence in our lives, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 
Well, until tomorrow, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May you know that he's smiling upon you, and may he give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have a great rest of the day. God is faithful, forever God is strong.